Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're talking about why you shouldn't use OS.System in Python, and probably other languages too, but specifically in Python. Um, and I'll talk about some of the reasons for that as well as some of the alternatives. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first reason uh, is, is perhaps the least important one, I guess, which is that it is potentially a performance problem. In order to show you that performance problem, uh, let me open up a Python interpreter. And I actually want to find that Python interpreter. Grab Python 3, should be this one. And we're going to use PS Tree and Watch from previous videos. I will link those in the description. Uh, but I want to look at the process tree as I run OS.System here. So we're going to import OS, and I'm going to run OS.System. And OS.System takes a command and it runs it, if you don't know what it does. Uh, we're going to run bin sleep here, just so I can show you what's going on. And we're going to give it some number here. So we're going to sleep for 100 seconds. And you'll notice over here that even though I just told it to run the sleep command, it's actually injecting a shell in between. And so this is where the performance problem is. Uh, OS.System will create this unnecessary shell process in order to run your executable here. Um, and you know, depending on your operating system, starting sub-processes might be particularly expensive, especially on Windows. Uh, starting a process takes you know, comparatively forever. Uh, it's not so slow on POSIX, but you know, there is still an overhead here. So that's the, the first reason. So for performance reasons, it creates an unnecessary process. I think the most important reason is it uh, is susceptible to um, shell injections because it uses a shell and so it is a security problem. Uh, let's make a silly file here that has a very particular name here. Uh, touch pwnd and for those of you that know the trick here you'll know what I'm doing already um, so we're just making that file in the working directory so if we do lister you'll see there is just this one file here this uh, weirdly named touch pwnd <laughs> and if we were to say I don't know maybe we wanted to cat all the files in the working directory and so maybe we you know let's also touch some other file Open foo, uh, write, well, actually, f.write hello world. So we'll just put some actual contents in here. Maybe we wanted to see all of the contents in the structure. I don't know. Um, but we have a list of files here from us to lister. And you'll see that that's this. And we might build a command string, which if you're ever building a command string, you're probably doing something wrong. And that's another reason why OS system is a problem. Uh, there are much better ways to not build command strings, and I'll show you some of those in a second. Um, but let's build a command string that just does, I don't know, head dash 10, and then we include all of those command arguments. And I'm just going to put that in an F string here. That's what this command is going to look like. And if we run os.system on that, we will we'll get something that we don't really expect. Uh, os.system on that string. Um, you'll see that it printed hello world, so we did indeed show the contents of the foo file. Uh, this file was empty, but <laughs> it actually didn't show the contents of that file because uh, this actually ran as a command. So backticks and bash are one of the ways, or an, or an sh, I guess, since it ran sh, uh, are one way to um, run subcommands. <laughs> and so this actually, you know, shell injected, we were able to touch a file just from trying to run head. Now, uh, if we, you know, os.remove pwnd, show you an alternative, which is using subprocess. Or it's subprocess, subprocess.call, uh, head dash 10, let's be a, a list here. And then we want to put those files in there. So we'll do os. Well, actually, we can just put files in here. Um, and you'll see that it, you know, it correctly showed the contents of this file, and it correctly showed the contents of this file, and we didn't run a shell. Oops, lister. Uh, we didn't run a shell, so there was no side effect of putting pwnd there. So that's the second reason. So from a security perspective, and note that, you know, if you're running os.system on untrusted input, it could do literally anything. This is probably a <laughs> the most benign possible thing it could do, which is just touch a file. But, you know, you can imagine it opens up a shell to the internet and, like, lets an attacker write commands directly on your computer or all sorts of different things. Um, note that subprocess also has the same problem if you were to do, 
um, shell equals true. So I would also say don't use don't use shell equals true in in uh, the subprocess module. So if we look at os.lister, uh, you'll see that it it ran this. And of course, you can do this safely. So there is if you import the schlex module. Um, and we do schlex dot quote f or f in oh, let's write this all out so schlex equals schlex dot quote f or f in files and so that will schlex that will put the proper quoting around these if it's necessary and then we could make our command which is add dash ten space dot join schlext command equals and you'll see that it you know it properly quotes this and so now this is safe to run an os dot system you know if you're if you're properly quoting your arguments os dot system isn't really unsafe but again like you don't have to think about this at all if you're using you know subprocess dot call where you don't have to do any quoting because it's actually inserting those as individual arguments and not involving a shell uh, and the last thing, the last reason why os.system is problematic is the interface for os.system is not all that helpful. Um, you'll notice here that it returned the integer for the, the return code of that shell, um, but we can't see it, like capture the output or hide the output or do anything interesting like that, which we can do with, you know, subprocess. So we did like subprocess.check call with, you know, head dash 10 our files, uh, our check, check output, for example. You know, we now have standard out as a variable here. And so you could, you know, pass that around or parse it or do whatever you want with it, but that's impossible to do with OS.System. But anyway, hopefully I showed you a couple reasons why <laughs> you shouldn't use OS.System um, and why, you know, the subprocess module is better. I'll probably do another video at some point talking more about subprocess, um, but this will be, you know, a nice little teaser for that. But anyway, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.